whether it makes any strategic uh, difference, shall we say, whether it alters the balance of forces fundamentally. Certainly not. As I say, Russia has very few of them. Yes, it has a longer range than the Iskander, the Iskander 500 kilometers. This one, according to Russia's uh, military reports, about 2,000 kilometers. Uh, but, as I say, it is what it is. It's just another missile, another feather in the cap of the Russian military. That's about it, really. Why use it now? Uh, it has been taken <laughs> as a, a message of deterrence, or if you wish, intimidation, which in Russia is a toolkit, uh, uh, a notion that is identical with each other. So yes, it is a message of deterrence or intimidation towards uh, Ukraine, but also towards the West. Yes, don't mess with us. We know that Putin is very keen to uh, forestall or prevent or thwart any prospects of Western intervention in Ukraine. Not that the West is about to intervene, but uh, obviously it's not a prospect that uh, Putin finds uh, palatable, so possibly that. But as I say, strategically, militarily, it's not, uh, uh, what is a good word to use, it's not uh, a game changer. So there's no reason to doubt this particular assessment. That yes, Russia has transitioned to what can be described as attritional warfare, oppositional warfare, call it what you will. Uh, will it mean further shelling? If Russia can uh, stretch to that, yes. And by that, I mean that, for example, if Russia is uh, within range of uh, the outskirts of Kiev, it could well happen. For the moment, there don't seem to be the heavy duty pieces such as artillery, including rocket artillery. Its range is uh, roughly the range uh, that separates uh, the outskirts of Kiev from the positions of the Russian forces to the north of it. So perhaps that's one re that is one reason why Kiev has not yet been targeted. It has used in excess of a thousand, uh, sorry, a thousand pieces of uh, rocketry, missilery. Uh, the supply of that is not inexhaustible. 